Hello, everyone, and welcome to your very first Life on the Edge class and this our very first video lesson. Um, I know I just saw all of you in the worship area not too long ago, um, and now you guys are in your small group and ready to begin the year. Um, and so this year, one of the things that we're talking about, or the main thing we're talking about, is our happiness. And that's really where we're starting this this week, is with talking about happiness. And so I know you all just made a long list of 10 things that make you happy. Um, and you had to, your small group leader had you bring it down to just one final thing that makes you the happiest. And so for my list, for example, um, there are a lot of things that make me happy. Um, some really simple things like um, ice cream makes me happy. Um, pizza makes me happy. Um, spending times with my spending time with my friends makes me happy. Um, spending getting to spend time with my family and um, you know hanging out with some of my younger brothers and sisters makes me happy. Um, making YouTube videos makes me happy. That's something I like to do in my free time. Um, you know, there's a long list of things that make me happy. Um, but when I have to whittle it down there's a couple of things that probably make me the happiest. Um, one is getting to talk about Jesus. And most of all, the thing that makes me the happiest uh, over everything else is God. God makes me the happiest. And there's a reason for that. Um, and that's because no matter what I've experienced in my life, even the hardest times in my life, the one thing that remains and the one thing that can sustain me is knowing that I have a loving God who loves me more than anything else in the world. Um, and because of that, my happiness can't be taken away because that God that loves me will always be there. And God wants that happiness for us. God desires us to be happy. He creates us out of love. And no loving God would want us to be miserable in our life. And I think that's a it, kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people misunderstand these days. I think a lot of times when people think about God, they think about him in this way that like he he wants to like ruin our lives or wants us to not have any fun or you know he uh, and all, has a lot of people have these really odd ideas about who God is, but more than anything else, God is a God who loves us, and because of that, he desires for us to be happy. But I think the challenge is, and I think this is where a lot of people misunderstand God's love, is that God wants us to be truly happy not just happy in simple ways, but he wants us to be truly happy and happy in a way that uh, cannot be taken away. And so, for example, like I said, ice cream makes me happy. I love ice cream. Like some of my favorite memories in college and even in recent years has just been like spending time with like friends and like going to get ice cream and just like hanging out and, you know, sitting around a table and eating ice cream and having a good conversation. Like that's so much fun. But at a certain point, ice cream can't make me happy. At a certain point, I'll eat so much ice cream that it will actually make me miserable. And I'll get a, an upset stomach or, or what have you. And at some point, ice cream will no longer make me happy. You know, I love spending time with my younger brothers and sisters. I, I, have, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. I'm one of 11 kids. Um, and several of my brothers and sisters are adopted, so they're a lot younger than me. Um, and even, even my youngest siblings, who I love spending time with, at a certain point, it's going to be hard to be happy when, when I'm with them because sometimes we're going to get on each other's nerves and sometimes too much is too much. And so that happiness has a limit. But with God, it's different. With God, he's always there to provide us happiness. In fact, Jesus even tells us that he desires for us to have abundant life. In fact, he wants us to have abundant life so greatly that he was willing to die on a cross for us. He was willing to give up his life so that we could be happy. Because ultimately, we find our greatest happiness when we are fulfilled, when we are fulfilled in our purpose. And every single one of us, every single one, myself, all of you, your small group leaders, every single person ever created has one specific purpose, and that is to be a saint to become a saint, to live with God in eternity in heaven for, for all of eternity. And that's an incredible uh, opportunity and a beautiful mission that we have in life. And the more that we fulfill that mission, the happier that we are. And so the closer we are to God, the closer that we are to who we are created to be, that is where we are most fulfilled. And ultimately, that's where we find our greatest happiness. 
But the challenge is, and the challenge since the very beginning of time, is that our sin gets in the way of that. Because if we're created to be saints, if we're created for God and to live in eternity with God, the one thing that can separate us from God is our sin. And so God, since the very beginning, excuse me, since the very beginning of time has put in place these opportunities to get back on track, even when we sin. You know, like I said, God, Jesus desires for us to live in eternity with him so greatly that he was willing to give up his own life on the cross. And so he gives us these rules to help us, to guide us towards him. And it's, it happened all the way since the very beginning. Even when Adam and Eve committed the first sin, God started by giving them a couple of rules to help guide them back to him. When, when the Israelites left Egypt and they were struggling to follow God, God gave them rules, the Ten Commandments. And every time people continue to screw up in the Old Testament, and it happens a lot because we as people tend to screw up kind of a lot. Every time God gave us tools to be able to get back on track, those guardrails to get us back. And what we call those are morality and social justice. Morality in the way that we're supposed to live as people and social justice in the way that we are called to treat other people. And so that's what we're talking about this year. All year, we're going to talk about morality and social justice, how we are called to live as good Christian people and how we are called to treat others. And I think that's a great thing because especially this year, I think it's a really good time to be reminded about exactly how we're supposed to treat others and exactly how we're supposed to live our lives. Um, and so with that, I want to encourage you today to know that God desires your happiness and that God creates us with a greater happiness in mind, a greater happiness than we could ever imagine for ourselves, a greater happiness than, than ice cream or pizza or family or friends could ever offer. No sport or mu music or art could ever overcome. The greatest happiness is in Jesus Christ. And that is, that is exactly the happiness that we are going to try and find together this year.